plesiosaurs were first identified as a distinct group of fossil animals in the early 1820 years, only a few years after ichthyosaurs. At the time, they were thought to be more closely related to reptiles than the more fish-like ichthyosaurs, and this early interpretation influenced their scientific name, which roughly translates to, near to reptiles. The first plesiosaur species to be named was Plesiosaurus dolichodirus, based on a nearly complete skeleton discovered by Mary Anning. This find revealed the unusual long neck proportions of these creatures for the first time. In the 1830 years, early depictions of plesiosaurs compared them to a snake threaded through a turtle, giving them highly flexible necks and turtle-like bodies. Like ichthyosaurs, they were thought to be amphibious, using their flippers to crawl onto land much like sea turtles. The 1850 years Crystal Palace statues of plesiosaurs reflected this early design, showing them with smooth skin and flexible reptilian bodies. The statues depicted powerful shoulders and flipper postures, giving the plesiosaurs a seal-like appearance overall. From the 1860 years, plesiosaurs were often depicted with an upright S-shaped neck. While some reconstructions, especially of the long-necked elasmosaurids, still portrayed snake-like necks, the dominant image for the next century was a plesiosaur with an egg-shaped body, or like flippers, and a swan-like neck. This body plan became so influential that it even influenced folklore, contributing to the popular image of lake monsters like the Loch Ness Monster. During this time, plesiosaurs were often shown floating or swimming at the water's surface, using their flippers to row while their long necks snapped up prey. They were also believed to haul themselves out of the water to lay eggs on land, though it was unclear how the largest species could support their weight on shore. Since the 90s, a surge of new plesiosaur discoveries and biomechanical research has transformed our understanding of these ancient marine reptiles. Their necks are now believed to have been less flexible, capable of only gentle curves, and likely much thicker and more streamlined with the body than previously thought. Rather than rowing with oar-like movements, all four of their flippers probably moved in a vertical, underwater flying, motion similar to that of modern sea turtles, a fitting comparison, as turtles are now considered their closest living relatives. Plesiosaurs were likely warm-blooded, gave live birth, and had a thick layer of insulating blubber. They had teardrop-shaped bodies and smooth skin, though an exceptionally well-preserved specimen shows they were covered with tiny, millimeter-sized scales that would have been nearly invisible without close inspection. Plesiosaurus itself was a relatively small species, about 3.5 meters long, with a broad body and a short, thick tail that likely had a rudder-like fin possibly oriented vertically or horizontally. It lived during the early Jurassic, around 201 to 183 million years ago, in the shallow tropical seas that covered what is now southern England. Compared to other plesiosaurs, it had a small head with eyes positioned upwards and to the sides. Its sharp, needle-like teeth suggest it preyed on soft-bodied aquatic animals like fish and cephalopods. Whether it had fleshy lips, crocodile-like jaws, or something in between remains uncertain, so its facial reconstruction is somewhat speculative.